Hi there, Kevin Furman here. Hey, you've reached a series of videos from Percussion Olympics, which is a series uh, of videos about uh, techniques and, and exercises and, and etudes. Mostly uh, these are about the technique involved in playing auxiliary equipment. This one is about triangle. So, you know, triangle, how hard can it be? Ding, 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 bada boom. Well, you know what? Honestly, there's more to it, a little bit more, definitely more than that. So I just want to go over some basics, make sure you understand that there's a good and bad way to play triangle. Um, um, and let's do the good one. You know, the, the idea with all this is to make a good sound. So just remember that everything's about how do you make a good sound. Part of the problem is when you're first learning things is, well, what is a good sound? I don't know. You just hit it, I guess, you know, but that's, that's really, there's more to it than that. So that's partially what this is about is just to introduce the idea that a good sound means something. And so let's talk about that. All right. So your triangle, you got your, this is a real basic triangle, you know, it's a three-sided triangle, right? Okay. So, <laughs> um, what, well, you'll notice like this is a nice, really nice triangle. Um, and what you'll notice about the difference between these is they, they definitely are made differently. This one's a lot thicker, it's bigger, obviously, but it's, it's designed to give a, a really good, um, solid triangle type sound. So we're gonna get into that. Now, there's different ways to hang the triangle, if you will. Um, there's a lot of times you'll see clips, right? And then people will kind of clip it onto something and it'll just kind of hang there and you whack it. Not the best, actually. One, it's heavy and it can pull the stand around. So if you clip it onto a stand, it can pull it down. This, the music falls off, things like that. Also, you kind of lose some control over where this, the, the triangle is. And if the clip isn't made right, and we'll talk about that a little bit, the, the triangle will spin around in place and it's really hard to like get the right side or get the same side every time, that kind of thing. Um, so what you want to do is, is think more about, okay, how can I play easily but still have it not spin and be controlled? So um, these are little contraptions that are really handy. They're really simple, um, but what you can do is place the triangle in this and then make sort of a C with your hand like that, turn it up, and just set the triangle on your hand. So then it's just kind of hanging on your hand. Okay, it doesn't require a lot of strength or anything. You just want to have it in your hand. So there it is, right? Now when you play, you have a lot of options. Okay, so there's some triangle beaters here, most of which I actually made myself. So you can go to any hardware store and find uh, metal dowels, if you will, and um, cut them to the length you want. Um, I actually sanded these down so there's not a sharp edge to them. And uh, I put some tape on there so I know which ones are which, right? So the red ones are thicker than blue and yellow are thinner yet. Um, and then I've even gotten some, like this is one that's actually been manufactured. It's even thinner than that. And I decided to go crazy and get very thin ones in case I need to play very quietly. So, you know, you can, you can get crazy with all that idea if you want. Um, your basic ones, you want kind of a, a big one, a medium one, and a small one. That's your basic set. It's good to have a pair, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, this is where clips actually do come in handy, and uh, uh, I won't, I'm not going to show you that today, but uh, I mainly want to focus on holding the triangle, because that's your, that's your main go-to. The clipping thing is sort of a last resort. Okay, so when you're, when you're playing triangle, right, so let's say you're going to hold the triangle, and you're going to play with one hand. A lot of times, your rhythms that you're using aren't real intricate, they're not crazy fast, so you don't need to worry about playing crazy fast, like I just said. So... Um, you can play with one hand. That's sort of the point there. So here's the thing. When you play triangle, there are two basic sounds, okay? There's the, the one where you're going to play on the bottom. So there's this open corner, right? So remember that. Um, you're going to play on the bottom side, right? And you, the, the beater is going to be parallel to the triangle or vertical, right? Towards the ground. So that kind of sound. It's got a shimmery kind of pretty sound, if you will, or whatever. It's a very shimmery sound. Most directors like that sound. Now, there's one thing I'm doing here. I'm holding the triangle up, and usually what I'll do is I'll look at the conductor through the triangle. One that tells them that you're communicating with them. They like that. Yes? Right? Uh, the other thing is the sound can then travel over the band, because it can get lost if you try, if you play it low. And that's, that's one of my main problems with clipping it, is now the triangle is low, and then you're trying to play through the band and it gets lost in the sound more easily. It's not, you know, it's not, you're still gonna hear it, but this will sound better. And it'll be clearer to the audience, okay? Which is the whole point, again, good sound. All right, so that's your first sound. The second sound is more of a pure triangle sound. And that is when you play, your, your uh, beater is, is a 
horizontal compared to the triangle, and it's playing um, perpendicular to it. So and you want to play on the closed side, away from the corner that's open. And you get this sound. Okay, so again, it's more of a pure sound for the triangle. There's the shimmery one, right? That's the perpendicular. This is the whole, or, you know, parallel to the triangle, perpendicular to the triangle. So it kind of depends on the situation of what sound you really want with your triangle. Uh, personally, I like the pure one, but a lot of a lot of conductors like that one. So I'll go with that one first and see if it sounds good or they like it or not or whatever. Um, so there's that. So whatever the rhythm is. Right now, if you need to play louder or softer, a bigger uh, or smaller beater is is the way to go. So you need to play really, really quiet. You get a smaller beater. It's a lot easier to control that than try to play really quietly with a huge beater. Right, so one beater playing really quietly, it's very hard to do and takes a ton of control. So why not make it easy? Just use a different beater. So if it needs to be loud, play with a big beater, soft, small. So obvious, but you know, sometimes we forget, we get a little quote lazy. All right, the next thing you're gonna see in triangle playing is rolls. Okay, now how you do that with one hand is there's a couple of ways to do it. Okay, now my preferred way is you wanna play across the top. So across the two, you know, the corner at the top. Another way to do it is to play at this corner. and you want to hit both sides. So you really don't have to go super fast. That's not crazy fast, so as long as it's even. If you want to play quieter, you move more towards the corner. Louder. Softer. Right? Avoid playing on the open side. It's not meant to be played there. That's not the sound that you want for a roll. It gets very inconsistent and so it's always the closed corners, um, either the top or the or the other closed corner, the bottom. Um, so that's rolling, okay? And it's never this. Okay? That's a dinner bell deal at a ranch somewhere. Let them do that. That's totally cool. But that's not what a triangle roll is. It's some, you know, like an old school phone, really, is what it sounds like. Hello? Just kidding. All right, so... Um, so that's your triangle roll. Now, the other thing I just did was dampening. Now, when you have a triangle held like this, you can actually kind of grab onto it and dampen notes or play muted and open. All right? So that allows, you know, holding it this way allows for dampening, allows for a lot of expressiveness, if you will, on a triangle. So it's, again, it's not just whack, whack, whack. You actually, you know, do that sort of thing. All right, so there's a couple ways to do it. So let's say you're, you're trying to switch between instruments, you don't have time to pick it up. Um, this contraption here is, is, as opposed to a clip, this is another way to hold a cymbal onto a stand. And it can be really useful. So if you don't have time to grab it, you know, make sure it's the right placement, but you, you just have to go quick. Okay, and that contraption, they're easily found online. I'm not gonna you know, endorse anybody at this point, but, uh, but that's, that is a thing where you can uh, get pretty easily and have it ready to go. The other clip thing, you can even get a clip from wherever, put some, uh, I would say, you know, nylon rope, thin, if you will, um, eighth inch is great and then um, tie it on there. Just make sure that when you do the loop on your clip, you don't make it too big, because if it's too big, it'll spin, and then it's really hard to play the triangle. So um, the only time I really ever do that is I'll have two clips. It'll look something like this, and I'll clip it onto a stand here um, with two clips, and then I'll play with two beaters so that I can play the rhythm really, really quickly. It's only come up in a few places where I need it, so generally speaking, you want to hold it to get that sound out, and you'd only need one hand. So you can do all the things you normally do with one hand, almost always. So, that's your basic triangle idea. Uh, again, the, the beaters and uh, are a thing in that they tend to disappear a lot. 
So my advice to you is always put the triangle and the beaters away in their bag and then put it back in the drawer. It's really easy at the end of class to just kind of throw it all in there, but then the beater gets busted or lost or, you know, it gets lost itself somehow. Um, just don't be lazy about it. You know, just put it away. It takes, you know, three seconds, put it in, great, whatever, triangle back in. Um, I actually have a, a triangle bag that this is my mine and uh, it actually holds triangles and finger symbols and the, all the beaters you need and, and two of these two of these holders too, just in case. So, um, you know, things like that. You can find cases that are a little bit more robust than just a bag to throw stuff in. Uh, but anything you have is but way better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. So there are other ones where it's just for triangle beaters. They have pockets, a little flap on them. You roll it up, you know, right? so you can just put the flap on, put it in the drawer, triangle goes in there on top of that, it's all good, and then the next person that needs it can have it. So it's really just, you know, taking care of your equipment, make sure you put stuff away, it just takes a few extra seconds, uh, avoid the, you know, I'm, I'm busy, I gotta go, and oh, it's so much work, and you know, try to avoid all that whenever possible, please, <laughs> but especially when you're putting equipment away, just take the time, I'm sure that if it gets too long, we can look at a better system or somebody can get you a pass if you're you know, late to class if you're, in, if you're in school. So there you go. There's the basics of Triangle. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. The link will be in the description, of course. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.